gardener's mindset is probably one of my favorite things that I, I again, these are just reminders I'm getting from the garden. But it's kind of like when you look over at, you know, maybe somebody you see on social media or celebrity that you just adore and you're like, ooh, I want what they have. But we focus on the harvest and don't realize that there was so much work to get there. So the gardener's mindset is really talking about being able to put in the work to become good at the growth process rather than the exact outcome or result. Because you have no idea what somebody went through to achieve their success or achieve their notoriety. And honestly, it's only 20% of the process at most. Hey family, I'm Jerry the Third, and you're doing Life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Hey family, welcome to another episode. I am so excited that you are here and I don't take it lightly that you decided to hit that play button and spend about an hour of your time with me. So with that being said, I want you to know that I'm 100% invested in your self-awareness journey. So you better believe that every week I'm bringing my A game for providing you the tools necessary to live a more fulfilled, purpose-driven life. And so family, I want to remind you to please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Because as you know, I set a lofty goal to touch one million hearts within the first two years, and I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost to your favorite social media platform. Also, don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected and continue the conversation. Now, are you ready to talk about gardening? Yes, I said we're going to talk about gardening just shortly after starting our series, Strategize Your Vision. And I'm excited for this conversation because it's a fun conversation. It's a fun conversation with principles that's easy to understand that Jerry so eloquently pulls from his gardening experience. He's literally pulled principles that he's going to teach us today from his gardening experience that we can use to help us to operate in purpose. And let me say this. He picked up gardening as a hobby when the pandemic first hit last March. And he was able to pull so much wisdom from it. And now he's going to share with us today. He's another example of how promise is pulled from the pandemic in order to help others embrace their purpose. Again, purpose is still relevant and it's still violent. And Jerry's another example of how you can still have high expectancy from an unforeseen event that challenges every ounce of your being, (laughs) every ounce of your being, okay? And maybe 2020 was just an additional layer that you needed in order for you to experience your harvest. Jerry and I are going to really dive into what that statement truly means and where you can go from there. So despite how you feel about 2020, you know, I'm positive that Jerry is going to help you make the necessary adjustments to your 2020 plan so you can execute it in 21. Now, without further ado, let me introduce Jerry the Third to you. Jerry the Third helps individuals and organizations reframe their relationship with growth and self care through gardening. He began gardening microgreens and mushrooms as a pandemic hobby and was captivated by the practice. Already accomplished in multiple fields, it didn't take long for him to draw clear parallels between his own world journey and cultivating crops on his mini farm. As a speaker and workshop leader, Jerry shares a fresh perspective from this age-old activity in a simple and engaging way. His aim is to leave every participant more prompt to engage and thrive in their own pursuit of growth. For more information on how to contact Jerry III, just check the show notes for all of his links. Now it's time for you to eavesdrop on my conversation with Jerry III. 
Jerry, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Absolutely. Thanks for inviting me. I am. Super, I'm super excited about this. Uh, I'm super excited about this episode. I know I said that for every episode, but that's just because I talked to some really dope people. And so I'm super excited about this episode because in the last episode, I kind of alluded to my audience that we was going to talk about gardening. And I'm pr pretty sure people are looking at me like, okay, really, Keisha, what the hell does gardening have to do <laughs> <laughs> with purpose, living in my truth, and executing the strategy for my life? What the heck? But it actually sounds like trauma to some people. They're like, wait a second, I gotta get dirty. It's like <laughs> <laughs> we live in, right? <laughs> oh my god, I didn't even think about it from that perspective. But um <laughs> I'm I'm I, I'm just excited to jump in because I know my audience is going to really learn some things today. And I like those conversations that come from a different from a different angle and use you know, analogies and examples from something that's super simple, like gardening, to help mm -hmm. like, break down complex, um, you know, complex things. Because when you're talking about purpose, sometimes I think purpose can be so abstract to people that they really cannot like grasp it. Because for some people, purpose, this word purpose, or, you know, purpose for my life, this is something that's huge for people. And so I think gardening is going to be a great way to really like, break it down and help people to understand so they can go about 21, you know, just feeling bold and blessed. So 100%. Let's do that. Let's make that happen. Let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited about that. But I like to start off every episode just talking about how I come to know my guests. And so you guys, Jerry, okay, so let me back up. Last year, I did a 5 a.m. challenge. It's a 5 a.m. Miracle Morning Challenge. And it was hosted by Amber Ziza. Shout out to Amber. And um, we got up five o'clock in the morning, Eastern time. So it was 4 a.m. my time. 4 a.m. for us. <laughs> yeah, it was 4 a.m. for us. And so it was just a, it was a really good challenge. And I'm glad that I did it because I got the chance to hear Jerry speak on his topic about gardening. And I, when I heard him speak, I was just like, oh my God, I got to have him on the podcast because I love the way that he broke everything down in such a small period of time. And I'm like, oh, we're going to talk for probably like 40 minutes to hour on the podcast. This is going to be great. So Jerry, I swear by the time, because I didn't know what to expect you know, when your day came, I didn't know what to expect, but it was like, what, a minute and a half into you talking, I pulled out my phone and started taking notes. And I literally probably had like, what, probably like 80, 85% of your questions already written out oh, within wow. that within that small time, you know, I was just like, oh yeah, I got to have a conversation with this guy. So, so yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited. And that's how we came to, to know each other. So let's just, let's, let's, dive into it so how and why did you get into gardening microgreens of all things yeah microgreens came about during the pandemic you know a, a way different time i was completely out of my element and i actually started gardening with mushrooms and that's a whole different topic but mushrooms led me to uh microgreens and i was like wait a second i can grow vegetables in a week this can't be true so i bought a kit i put it to the test and i was just amazed that it could happen and it was kind of like, you know, one of those pandemic hobbies that a lot of people I'm sure are picking up, but it became a, a point of fascination for me. And you just mentioned, you know, people try to discover their purpose. And I think the easiest way to do that is to lean into your curiosity. So I was like, wait a second, tell me these little plants are gonna grow in a week. Let me see if I can do this again. And I just kept going through the process and uh, started being reminded of all these things about life and growth. And that's really how simply it started. That's so funny because when the, uh, well, what's so funny is that when the pandemic started, uh, my husband bought me a tomato plant because gardening is something that I have been talking about, especially now that we're in, now that we're in our house, because my father-in-law, he has all this land. So is is damn near a farm. And so <laughs> we're like, we need to at least start like a small garden. So pandemic, we in the house, right? So my husband goes out and he buys this tomato plant. When I tell you that tomato plant never survived, I never <laughs> watered that tomato plant. I just totally forgot all about that tomato plant. It was the wrong season. It was the right intentions, but it was the wrong season because at the top of the pandemic, it was like, 
everybody wanted a piece of Keisha because we, you know, businesses was going virtually. I was already known for like hopping on Instagram and, you know, doing lives and stuff like that. I was, I'm already known as a speaker. So people was reaching out left and right because they right. wanted to have, you know, speaking engagements and they wanted to do collaborations and stuff like that. So I totally forgot all about that little tomato, that little tomato plant. I did a whole TED talk <laughs> about how some things you just do in the wrong season and that's okay. You know, mm-hmm. it's a great idea, but it really can be a great idea in the wrong season. So I did a whole TED talk on my Instagram, in my Instagram story. So you guys. Wow. You know, follow me on Instagram. You should, because because you, you missed my TED talk about my tomato play. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But that that's true. It could be the right intention, but if it's not, it's not the right timing. And I mean, you you saw it for yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, so I say that jokingly, but you guys, I'm like really really serious, really really serious. It it. it also pertains to your gifts and operating your gifts. It could be the wrong season, you know, and that's the reason why things are, you know, not working out, but that doesn't mean that you don't have purpose. It doesn't mean because my tomato plant now, that doesn't mean I can never have a garden. It's just that it wasn't the right season for me to have the garden. That's all, that's all that matters. Delay doesn't mean denied you guys. So that was pretty much the synopsis of my TED talk. <laughs> On a tomato plant. No, but but what vegetables can you grow in a week, though? So many. So basically, the reason you call them microgreens is because you're cultivating them before they're fully grown. So some things I grow usually and sell in my kits are like red cabbage, um, broccoli, uh, something called purple kohlrabi. And it's the exact same seeds you'd use to grow regular broccoli, but we're just cutting that growth cycle shorter. And it actually ups the nutritional value. So most things can be grown as microgreens, even like baby carrots. I just don't do stuff like that. <laughs> Get out of here. Red cabbage for real? Yeah, yeah. And okay. it has all the same flavor. It's actually maybe a better flavor. And also when I grew up, like cabbage wasn't a fun thing to eat. If I had grown up with these little smaller versions, they almost, almost, it's like a garnish. And um, it's way more flavorful, flavorful, and I just prefer it. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So I maybe have to look into one of your one of your kits because maybe that'd be something that's a little bit um, easier for me to to do something that doesn't take as much as much time. But we, I'm pretty sure we're going to get into the whole the whole process when we talk about the cycles. But um, at what point doing your Michael Green hobby? right? Mm-hmm. Michael Green's hobby. At what point did you connect operating purpose with gardening? Really, really early on. So when I grew up, like, I, you know, all these great books about purpose and, you know, self-development, I grew up as a teenager reading Think and Grow Rich and The Richest Man in Babylon. That was all part of my backstory. And my career so far has been a lot of growth inspired stuff. I was a D1 scholarship athlete. I was a competitive tap dancer as a kid. Um, I quit my job, taught myself French, moved to Paris. I was successful in corporate. Like I've done all these things, but most of my life is about self-learning and growth. So as I'm learning this new process of growing microgreens, I'm like, wait a second, this is reminding me of this situation here, or this situation here with the team. It's like, let me dive a little bit deeper into this because there are a lot of really you know, wise people that we look up to in society who talk about the values of gardening. And not only does it give you a chance to see these lessons in real life by growing, cultivating a crop, but you also have like your own little universe there. So between the pandemic kind of turning all my focus internally, I just took that a next step further and focused on my garden and started just really listening to lessons, if you could put it that way. Man, that's pretty cool. And then you just pull from um, pull from your childhood, just how you grew in different stages. So it was just easier for you to really like pick that up. I like that because that's a, that's also... A, test, a testament to being exposed to different things, right? Yeah. And yeah, because <laughs> yeah, you've been exposed to different things and learning and, and noticing how you've been growing through this exposure when it came to something as, you know, gardening microgreens, it was easier for you to, to, to pick up on it. You know, everybody, it sounds like you had a, a pretty decent childhood. Everybody's childhood is not like that. You guys, you know about my childhood. Um, Jerry, I was sexually abused at eight years old by my mom's husband and abuse lasted for eight years. And I grew up in a project where I saw Chicago. So, you know, 
Think a girl rich, richest man in Babylon. No, I ain't heard about none of them books. Literally, probably not until I decided to um, dabble into entrepreneurship. To be a hundred percent honest with you, mm-hmm. rich dad poor dad was something that my aunt and my uncle uh, brought to my attention. But even still, that I was in college at that time, and I never even really read the books. I was just like, okay, auntie, okay, yeah, I'm gonna try to read the book, but never really, but never really, you know read the book or whatever however you guys know that along my journey from victim to survivor that took self-awareness that took discovery that took exploration and the fact that you know i noticed that the more i got to know about me Mm -hmm. the more i grew the more i wanted to learn more you know because it was therapy where i started to really get into uh personal development books because my therapist recommended a personal development book you know to help me um with overcoming the trauma uh from the sexual abuse and so i just got addicted to that because it was teaching me something that i didn't know before it was a whole nother conversation that i had never even like had exposure to you know yeah. so I think when you put yourself out there, you guys, and you try new things and you just expose yourself to new things that, you know, curiosity for growth is probably going to naturally pop up. So, you know, as Jerry talks about his wonderful childhood, you know, growing (laughs) up, if if that wasn't you, don't think that, you know, it's too late for me. Don't think that because it's not, you can do it too. Yeah, no, if, I, if I could add one thing on that, like I'm super grateful for the household that I grew up in, but then I actually went out and did this stuff. And that's one huge part in the spiritual new age self growth committee. Like I quit my good job out of college to go and do this thing in France. I left France by, you know, everything was intentional. And part of the reason why my resume just looks like a hodgepodge of skills and experiences is because I have to put the things to the test. So um, having the exposure, you have a lot of people who could, you know, be way in their career. Yeah, they've read the stuff, but they haven't actually practiced it. Mm-hmm. And I think making your your belief, your practice makes all the difference. That's the only way you're able to arrive. That's the only way we're both able to arrive and have this conversation here is because we've made this a part of our practice, not just our philosophy or theory. Oh, I love that. And you you guys, that's this is the reason why I am building a safe, just free community, because I want to show you guys that what I teach you here on the podcast, I actually, you know, practice what I teach. I do it in my own life, even in my, my practice, because I'm a self-awareness coach. You guys know that. What I teach my, my clients is what I actually do. So if you're not following me across social media, like Keisha Wooder, I encourage you to do so. So you can actually see me do what I'm, you know, what we talk about here on the podcast, how I actually implement that in my own life. Because Jerry, you are absolutely right. You know, we can learn, 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 learn. But if you're not executing, it's like, it's, that's like... Execution is like half the battle. That's like half the battle. And I know you say that when somebody looks at your resume, they may see a hodgepodge of different experiences and stuff. It's so funny. It looks like a hodgepodge to the human eye, but to the mm-hmm. spiritual eye, all that is purposeful. Yep. All that is work to you getting here and doing what it is that you do, you know, as a speaker talking about purpose, you know, from gardening, all that play a part into you getting to where you are right now. So yeah, human eye, you know, may look like a hodgepodge, but mm -mm, everything was, was in divine order. I'm sure it's in divine order. So what is the gardener mindset and how do we adapt it? Ooh, the gardener's mindset it's probably one of my favorite things that I, I, again, these are just reminders I'm getting from the garden, but it's kind of like when you look over at, you know, maybe somebody you see on social media or celebrity that you just adore and you're like, Ooh, I want what they have. But we focus on the harvest and don't realize that there was so much work to get there. So the gardener's mindset is really talking about being able to put in the work to become good at the growth process rather than the exact outcome or result, because you have no idea what somebody went through to achieve their success or achieve their notoriety. And honestly, it's only 20% of the process at most. But if we adopt this gardener's mindset, this gives us the courage to continue investing in our growth, because it don't always work out, just like we were talking about. It doesn't always work out the first time with your tomato plant, but the next time, because Mm -hmm. you're growing and cultivating this, we can uh, adopt that as a mindset. And some people might phrase it as trust the process. 
Now, process sounds like a one-time thing. We're always going through many different processes at the same time. And trust the fact that you can improve at putting together a process to get the results you want. That's the gardener's mindset. Man, I love that. So put in the work to get good at the growth mindset, as opposed to the result and the harvest. You guys, I'm going to need you to sit on that for a second, (laughs) because he said to put in the work to get good at the growth stage, the growth mindset, to get good at growth. Like, I really want you guys to to like sit on that because I'm just thinking back to a conversation that I had with a friend who has a startup and she's been working on a startup for like a year and a half, but a year and a half has been, you know, research and development. It's literally has been building the foundation of her business because this is a product-based business and she's going to go through the whole process of getting angel investors and things like that. So it's a little bit different. Her process for entrepreneurship is a little bit different, you know, from, from my process. And I was literally telling her to give yourself time because mm-hmm. she's like, you know, oh, it's been a year and a half and I haven't seen growth. And I'm like, but you spent a year and a half of prepping your foundation is solid. You did a, a year and a half of research and development, validation, building, you know, a relationship with your vendors, building relationships with angel investors. Like now it's time for you to uh, pour into your, your, your audience. That's a whole nother process. And yep. you have to, you know, put the work into to do that. Like, don't look at it as the same thing. Look at it differently. You have to put the work in to get good at the growth. Man, that's uh, that's deep because far too far too often we focus on the results. Far too often we fo- we focus on the results, and you know, we heard people say, and I've said it too not to compare yourself to people on social media because, you know, people just show you that highlight wheel. Um, they don't show you the struggle behind what, what it is that they do. And, you know, definitely don't do that. But it's like, I think sometimes people bash those who just show they, their highlight wheel and don't show them the struggle. It's like people are not obligated to show you their struggle. And it's hard to, like, when you think about the dynamics of social media, especially, like, me counting seeds to fill my garden kits is not sexy. Like you, you're not going to click on that. That's not popping. I'm sitting there with a, with a bonnet on, you know, self-care might have a face mask on, whatever. Like that don't look cool. (laughs) doesn't look way as cool as, as the results. And um, when we're results focused, that that's kind of what social media taps into. So it can be difficult to, to really understand what it takes. It could be difficult. And then to be honest with you, Jerry, some people don't want to see that anyway. They don't, they don't want to see that because they want to believe that overnight success is a thing. They now, want the scary to- part. I, I didn't mean to cut you off. The scary part is if you see me at home kind of looking bummy, putting my thing together, it almost looks too similar to your situation, but my results look way different than your situation. So it reminds you that you could be doing this too. I don't, there's nothing special about anything I've done have to get some sounds effects so I can do like the clues <laughs> play <laughs> my boy oh my god y'all need to rewind that and listen to that again <laughs> listen to that again ah that's good that's good that's good yeah I love that I love that because my situation may be so close to your situation but you see me doing the work because you don't want to do the work hey family quick announcement If you're ready to go deeper and would love to continue the conversation outside the podcast, then I have something just for you. I'm creating a safe, judgment-free community of like-minded people to grow and build the support team that we need to operate in purpose. If you want to join me, please visit livingherttruthpodcast.com and then click the join community button so we can partner together on your self-awareness journey. I am looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I am so excited to deep dive into your purpose and we're going to have such a great time, you guys. I look forward to seeing you in the group. Now, back to the conversation. Yeah, some people just don't want to um, do the work that's 
do the work that's required because some of the work that is required is to go deep is to uncover some some type of traumatic experience and I know people say that I'm deep all the time because I share a lot I talk a lot about openly about uh, surviving sexual abuse and and it's not so much that I tell my I don't think it's not so much that I tell my story and it's just this this story where you know I put people in this emotional pit it's not like that but it's just that people don't want to talk about that because they don't want to face their trauma because that's what it's really about they don't want to face their trauma but it's like you guys if you want the success that that I have you know you can have that but you also got to do work I think I'm not going to sit up here and just flaunt, you know, what I've accomplished over my life without telling you that I was in therapy for a long time to overcome, you know, sexual abuse, the trauma for sexual abuse. I'm not going to, you know, I'm just not going to like leave that out. So, you know, I encourage you to, to like do the work, but that's, that's, that was good. I'm glad you said that and, uh, and pointed that out. So let's break down the four phases of growth. Okay, the four phases of growth that you pull from gardening. And I want to talk about those one by one because that is super, super good. And I want to talk about how each phase, you know, pertains to operating purpose. So phase one. So at a high level, your four phases of growth are number one, your planting phase, putting mm -hmm. seeds in the ground. Number two, that's setting up your foundational growth. Phase number three is your flourishing phase. And phase number four is your harvest. Okay. Four steps. That's it. That's it? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> you want me to go in depth on those now? Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's do it. So this whole thing is a cycle. We start at step one and then we go to step four. But one thing that is important though, because you have mentioned purpose and intention, especially about your tomato plants. So we're going to talk about those a little bit. Actually, the first step before you plant is to start with the harvest in mind, is to align your intention with the actions you're about to take. So when we garden, we literally have a picture of the seeds and how they're going to look before we start. <laughs> That's you focusing on the harvest because we do need to align our intentions with the actions we're going to take. There's going to be a lot of opportunity for uh, second guessing ourselves, for doubt, for disappointment, maybe even failure. But if we start with our uh, intention clearly in mind, start with that harvest in mind, we have a shot of success. Because like you mentioned earlier, it might be the right intention, just the wrong season. And that usually happens when we're just doing things that maybe we see others doing, but doesn't really resonate with us that, hey, I can do this too. Mm -hmm. Start with the harvest in mind, but we can go straight into seeding. This is when you plant your seeds into the ground. And it's funny because this is such an act of faith that in the garden, it's nothing to us. And if you're a gardener listening, uh, you've had some gardening experience yourself. Um, it's funny that we don't second guess the fact that we're going to put something into the ground. And in the case of microgreens, it's going to crop up in a couple of days. But when it comes to our own goals and ambitions, that hibernation period where we can't see anything active, it's difficult for us to hold into that same belief, that same conviction that this will actually manifest. So that seeding phase is really important. Oh my God. I just, you guys, Sit on that for a second, okay? Sit on that for a second again, because, you know, phase one, he says that, you know, have the, the harvest in mind when you start, because whatever is on that package. So if you buy some seeds of sunflowers, if you will, right? You expect that when you plant those seeds, what you see on that package is what's going to grow. There's no doubt in your mind that what's in that on that picture is going to grow. It's the same with your goals. But, you know, it's not just any goals. It's your purpose based goals. It's your purpose driven goals. You guys, if you haven't um, listened to the very first episode of the year, please go back and do so, because in the episode I talked about the importance of purpose-driven goals and why random goals is not necessarily going to give you the fulfillment and the happiness that you really want. Like there's a difference between setting random goals and purpose-driven goals. I think for me personally, most people who set a whole bunch of goals every year or New Year's resolutions, if that's what people still do these days, every year, but don't achieve them, it's because they're random. They're not rooted from purpose. They're not connected to our overall vision. 
Mm-hmm. Which you see on the package, like what Jerry just said, the harvest is not attached to anything. You're they literally started, um, you know, creating these goals based off of what they see on social media, based on what their parents are probably saying, based on you know the favorite cousin in the family who's always achieving something. Like your goals are not attached to anything, you know. Same with vision boards, you guys. At the end of 2020, I did a whole you know podcast episode. So on the four reasons why your vision board didn't work because you created a vanity board and not a vision board. How often do we create vanity boards because we haven't, you know, prayed about that thing. We haven't meditated on nothing. We haven't even identified and embraced our purpose yet. We're randomly putting together visions that we not even really attach to because it's not our vision. So when you are setting purpose-driven goals that's attached to a purpose-driven vision, I'm going to need you to have expectation that that vision is going to manifest. And that's what Jerry is saying. So execution and expectation, I think those are going to be my two words for 2021. Execution and expectation. Because some of us, we can execute all day long, but in our heart of hearts, we don't expect a positive result. Hmm. And we need to ex- we need to expect that expectancy is is a, is a birthright. It's a birthright. We need to expect. If you are a Christian like I am, you have to expect the blessing from God, especially if you're following His plan. Expectancy. I'm sorry, Jerry. Go ahead. What's the next oh, fact? You're good. I love the additional layers because we could spend a whole hour just on this part. Like you're absolutely right, and I hope. I hope uh, folks are are receiving it (laughs) because it's so true, but you only know it by going through it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You only know it by going through it. So go through it, guys. It's okay. I even hold your hand if you need to. The other part when we're planting our seeds that's really important and it's it's really interesting with microgreens is that um, when I grow my microgreens, if you're a traditional gardener, usually you put down what's called a layer of topsoil. So you'll plant your seed into the ground and then maybe put another inch or so of soil. And what that does is it actually adds pressure on top of the seed so it has something to resist against. Now, we don't do this with microgreens. In fact, what we'll do is actually put weights on top and different degrees of weights for different crops. And what's really interesting is you don't always know how much weight or pressure is required for you to get to your harvest. And that's really important setting out. So broccoli needs five pounds of pressure. Sunflower might need 12. Your vision to become a real estate mogul might need a couple of years of pressure. Your vision to just go down to the grocery store and buy something that's organic and healthy might only need an hour of pressure. And that's one thing that we don't realize early on. So you can clearly see how like some of these lessons were just just yelling at me from the garden, like, yo, Jay, you want to accomplish A, B, C, D, E, but um, you can't expect your amount of pressure to be the same as the person next to you because you're a whole different person. So respect that part of the process and proceed anyway. Man, you, once again, you guys, I need y'all to sit on that, <laughs> meditate, sit on that and meditate on that too. With when he's playing Michael Greaves, depending on the scene, it's going to require a different amount of pressure. So if he is, you know, planting red cabbage or if he's doing broccoli it's going to be two different types of pressure so when you find yourself in a situation where it seems like everybody around you is just doing amazing things understand that you just needed a little bit more pressure and that doesn't mean that you have done something wrong it doesn't mean that you unworthy it doesn't mean that your blessing is a little bit less than somebody else's blessings it just means that you just need a different amount of pressure because even though cabbage and broccoli takes two different types of um pressure they're both very nutritious you still need both of them to have a healthy balanced you know diet right? Because what vitamins and minerals that cabbage provides is probably totally different from what cabbage provides. But guess what? We still need both. So what I went through as a child is completely different from what Jerry went through as a child. But guess what? My purpose matters and his does too. So my gifts and talents, you need those just as much as you need Jerry's gifts and talents and vice versa. We need your talents and skills too. So don't you know, downgrade yourself. Don't beat yourself up. Don't question God because you feel as though that you're still, you know, you still feel 
dirt being poured on, poured on top of you because it is it's going to get like that sometimes you know hell I've gotten like that because it was a point where when I started my business Jerry I love to travel I'm always traveling but when I started my business traveling was something that went on the back burner because I wanted to use that money to invest in invest in my business but it was like as soon as I stopped traveling all of my friends like everybody else wanted to travel everybody else now you have time like really y'all that's what, y'all, that's what we're doing <laughs> now you want to travel no I have to stick to have to stick to my guns right so this is something that I have to do because I expect to have a super successful business but I gotta put in the work mm-hmm to get good at the growth. And if that means holding off from traveling for a year or two or however long it takes, then so be it, right? So you may find yourself in a situation that's like that too. But just understand that you just need a little bit more pressure. That's it. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And it's it's all a part of the process. Everybody, it, it comes with everybody's journey. So you want to go to the next phase? It comes with every, yes, but it comes with everybody's journey, people. So that means that just because you're under pressure, don't think nobody else is under pressure too. Don't think Beyonce is not under pressure. She's under pressure. (laughs) Jay-Z is too. Come on. Go ahead, Jerry. I'm sorry. (laughs) I'm loving this, Lakeisha. This is dope. All right. So phase number two is our foundational growth phase. And I'm thinking how much to share. Are we going on time right now? Mm -hmm. All right, we'll just, we'll keep it, we'll keep it short and snippy. So the first thing about your foundational growth is this is where the seed is looking to branch out its roots underground to get resources. But if you ever went to school or have seen pictures of root structures, whether it's a tree or a plant, you notice that roots don't go straight down into the ground like a toothpick or a telephone pole. Roots spread out because the fact is to stabilize yourself and to get the resources you need, everything is not going to be in one direct line. You're going to need to spread out. You're going to need to open up your mind. You're going to need to open up your network. You're going to need to be vulnerable and explore some stuff to get the resources you need to support your growth going forward. And I find oftentimes we might break out of that shell, get through our pressure. We're trying to grow, but we keep going back and tapping the same old resources Mm -hmm. and it's not actually aiding our growth. (laughs) It's given us some, you know, feeling of being busy without being productive. And I saw that so many times across my journey, uh, starting my own podcast, learning French, living in fr- where I'd just be going to the same people and wonder why I wasn't getting results. It's because, bro, you're trying to tap the same line again. You actually need to grow it out in new ways and make sure you can support yourself with that root structure. Oh, I love that. You know, that goes back to um, what I teach about building a support team, Jerry, because I'm all about building a support team. I think, you know, sometimes that uh, we have a scarcity mindset when it comes to people. Usually when people talk about scarcity mindset, they automatically think about money. It applies to money too, but it also applies to people. People are a resource as well. And I know that you have your best friend from kindergarten, right? And she knows all your secrets and you probably don't want to let nobody else into your circle. But baby, there's only so much that that best friend from kindergarten can only give you. As what Jerry just said, your support system is not just your friends. It's not just your family. It could be a therapist. It could be a life coach. Mm -hmm. It could be a chiropractor, right? It's it's whoever you need in the season that you're in so you can operate in purpose. That's who should be a part of your support system. Now, it could be a financial planner. If that financial planner is going to help you, you know, Work on your debt, save money so you can be in a position where you're not super stressed out when it comes to money so you can do what it is that God has called you to do. That's a part of your, your support system. That's the resource. That's what he means when he says the roots don't just go straight down, right? They grow in all types of ways because they need to get whatever resources that they need in order for that plant to grow. Same with you. What do you need in your life right now? in order to grow and move into the to move to the next level find that person it doesn't have to be your mom or your dad so we have to come up out of that scarcity mindset when it comes to people being a resource 100 percent. and to make it even maybe more practical is sometimes mm-hmm. it might be a book or a podcast there's a lot of shows that i only there are a lot of podcast platforms where i only have one of their shows saved 
I don't love the host, don't love the guest, but it might be that I love the second guest they had and I wanted to hear what they said in that context. So it could be opening a book that, shoot, lately I've been turning through the Bible and learning from verses from that. I haven't opened my Bible in years. That's not part of my normal practice, but you know what? I'm willing to invest in whatever direction is going to give me my growth. And that's where I go. We can deal with information. There's, you know, we have a lot of hangups sometimes about who's delivering the information. Um, and yeah, that's a, that's a hang up. <laughs> Get you it some is a hang up. And that's when we have to practice discernment. So, and discernment is something that you have to use in order to really get good at it. So I have to practice, practice discernment. But until you um, figure that out, you guys, if somebody is saying something that goes against what it is that God has called you to do, then, you know, dismiss it. Take what you need and leave all the rest to the side. It's okay. If, if you're strong enough to ignore it, usually you're strong enough to do that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, last thing with the, uh, the foundational growth phase, with microgreens, they go through a blackout period. So I don't see my seeds after I plant them for about two days. This gives them the environment so they can do their little nature magic and everything. But you know what happens sometimes, especially my first few growing cycles, I used to get really disappointed because I would lift up that cover card where they couldn't see any light and notice that, you know, about 80, 85% of my seeds have started to sprout. But what about these other kernels that weren't doing anything? Did I mess something up? And I tried tinkering with temperature and water and stuff like that. At the end of the day, not every seed is going to sprout every time. And this kind of relates back to what you said earlier about starting some things and not having success. Sometimes it's just not your season, but nature already has a plan to know what seeds in their DNA are ready to go through their growth cycle at this period. And we need to trust that. So there's no 100% guarantee that starting out is going to mean success, but it does mean we get an opportunity to grow. And that's really essential in this foundational phase because we're really close to the start. We can just do it again. Ooh, and oh, that is so good. Yes, we can do it again. But the thing, the, dif the difference is, is when you do it again, you start from experience, you guys, because you yeah. learn something, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the iterative approach. It's it's going through life as, as a process or an iteration. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, if, if something you um, do something and doesn't work, work out, it's okay. Focus on the things that you learn through the process, you know, and realize that you actually survive because a, a lot of times fear pops up and we think that, oh my God, I'm going to die. <laughs> if I do this, I'm going to die. <laughs> we, we, we get real dramatic in our heads, but just realize that you live, you survived, and just use that as a way to build your confidence. You know, in my online course, um, mass, my online master life class, Strategize Your Vision, you know, I talk about something similar to, you know, the, the blackout period. I, I talk about when it's really time to work on yourself internally. And normally when you go through that internal phase on the outside, people are not seeing the growth on the outside. And that's because you're doing the internal work. And sometimes the internal work takes time, you know, for it to show up on the surface, but continue to do the work. And to, to make that even more clear, if you have ever built a house from the ground up, it's going to come a time where you're going to be constantly seeing you know, progress with the house, you know, they're going to lay the concrete, oh my God, the frame is up and all this. And then all of a sudden it's going to seem like things have stopped and you're going to be like, okay, well, I came here last week and this is exactly what it looks like. Like, are they not working on my house? Yeah, they are. They're on the inside of the house working on the house because they're putting up all of the wires and the sheet rock and whatever else that they're doing inside of the house. So on the outside, you don't see any changes, but there's growth happening. So, yeah. hundred percent. And like I said, these are just, these are really reminders. We see we yeah. witness every day, but if we don't make that association, uh, sometimes life can seem very scary or mysterious. We're, mm -hmm. we're all talking about the same stuff here. We are, we are. And I love it. So what's the next phase? Third phase is our flourishing phase. Don't have to share too much here. This is where we actually start to see the growth of the plant. So now they're growing day by day. You can see the leaves starting to form. You know that the harvest is close. And it seems like, you know what? Everything's good. We got past that tough, you know, planting phase. We got past the foundational phase. But actually, our plants are just as sensitive in the flourishing phase as they were in the prior phase. They're still vulnerable. A harvest can still be compromised. And this is by not managing our invisible or unseen factors. 
So in my plant world, you know, you think about, okay, I need to start a garden. I'm going to need some good dirt with some good nutrients. I'm going to need a little bit of light, a little bit of water. And for most people, it stops there. Mm -hmm. But when you take it the next step further, well, I need to control my humidi my conditions of humidity. What is my ground soil temperature? What, is, what are the wind conditions looking like? Am I inviting too much air in where now the, you know, the moisture from the ground is wicking up and now my plants are thirsty? A lot of these invisible factors that you're actually managing. Hey, I have light, but what's the quality of light? Is it as good as sunlight? Is it an LED light? All of these unseen factors. And for us as people, so related back to us, yeah. this really comes in the form of what happens in between our two ears. What is our mental and emotional state? How are we seeing this internally? Because that's the first thing or one of the first things that can compromise us. It's by comparing ourselves to other people next to us and saying, well, wait a second, I feel like we both started in the same plot. Why, why am I not growing as fast? Or it's by not having a collaborative environment or support group where you have positive expectation. You can have great success. And I've done this, had fantastic success on paper, but then actually get to the track meet and no height. I used to be a pole vaulter and not clear the bar for 10 meets straight and literally get dragged around the country to not clear bars. To, I had everything right on paper, but my head space was off. I wasn't able to actually execute and allow myself to flourish to my highest potential because mm -hmm. there was something in my head. So managing these unseen factors is especially important, especially uh, because we're seeing things grow. We think we're making it, but just a small compromise in our mentality and our emotional approach can completely ruin a harvest. It's like mold or a disease coming in to, to crush an entire crop. Mm, that's good. That's good. You know, and that, that's the reason why I tell people all the time that I constantly work on myself every single day, whether or not that's listening to an audible book, because you guys know I'm addicted to audible podcasts, you know, spiritual study, you know, my therapist, I'm always doing something every single day to work on myself. Because even though I am flourishing right now, it can still be something that's unforeseen that can knock me off my knock me off my game. So yeah, definitely need to work on yourself every single day. I love that. I love that. 100%. And we, we struggle with mental health and, and mental wellness here. It could be not getting enough rest. Yeah, you're flourishing, but the way you're sleeping, you might not make it to the finish line. If you do, you can't even be excited about the harvest because you are freaking exhausted. Mm, yeah, rest, that's, that's super important. Rest is super important. I'm gonna do my best to have somebody here on the podcast to talk about sleep because I think that's super important. We don't get enough. Especially for us, especially for us. But that's a whole, like you said, a whole nother podcast. Uh, uh, right, that's a whole other podcast. I'm trying to get somebody here to talk about it. Yes, that's a whole other garden podcast. here. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. So the last phase, we talked about it a bit, is the harvest phase. And this is what we are working towards. This is the outcome. But a couple things I want to share that are different than the three times I think I've mentioned it already. Okay. One is your harvest, your outcome is just a, a way to kind of keep score of our growing process. It's not the end all be all. It is just a metric. It is just points on the board because we're cultivating this gardener's mindset. We're going to do this again. And I think it's interesting that some people, um, they go through it, you know, they, they think the car is their biggest factor of success. They think their wealth, they think that their relationship, it could be having a partner that's older or younger, whatever. These are the signifiers of success, but now we're lost in the material world. Now we're lost in something that just like a crop harvest is naturally going to fade away and disintegrate. What have we actually taken from this process that's for us to continue to go forward? So that's what I want to share left there on the harvest is that the harvest is not the end all be all. This is just a marker of our success and how we went through this process. We are committed to doing this again, maybe getting different results, maybe getting the same results, but this isn't everything. This is just what exists in the, in the material world and it will fade. Oh, that is good. That is good. You know what? I bet you that's that's what happens when you have super high achievers who get to a certain, you know, salary or a certain point in a career and they feel like, okay, now I'm unfulfilled. I have acquired all of this materialistic things and now I feel unfulfilled. And it's probably because they haven't started out over or started to do something else, right? They feel as though that that harvest, what they accomplished is the end all be all and it's not. Right, or the fact that they've put so much value on this outcome, this factor. So mm -hmm. what happens if you don't get the bends in the car you wanted? What happens if you get in the bends and it has a flat tire? And at the end of the day, these material possessions, not to make it sound too woo woo, but yeah. they, they are 
imbued with their value by us. It's you that gives it the value. Like there's no inherent value in a diamond. It's just what people attribute to it. So that's that's not lasting versus knowing that you have this skill set you're building on. No one can take that away from you. Mm, that's true. That's 100% true. Okay, so Jerry, okay, so what about this? Because you know, uh, or, or maybe though, for you guys who, who may not know, usually when people, there's statistics that show that when people set resolutions at the top of the year, by February 1st, like 90% of the people have fallen off of their goals, mm -hmm. right? So you gave us all of this great information, Jerry, on what we can do and how we can literally use gardening to operate in our purpose. Okay, six months from now, mm -hmm. like, how do we get back to these principles, especially when, you know, we start off the year good and we're excited, you know, and then six months, we completely fall off because life happens. We don't know what's going to happen six months from now. You know, when we started 2020, we didn't know a pandemic was going to happen. At least I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no. so... So what steps can you give us or, you know, to get back to, to pivot back to these principles that you taught us today? Yeah. So that's a, that's a great question. The first thing you want to do, because things change all the time, we are in an accelerating global economy. What's happening in Q1 might not be happening in Q3. Your plan might need to change, you know, becoming adaptable is great. The first thing I, I encourage people to do is to lean into your curiosities and your interests. And when we're talking about finding your purpose, a lot of times it can be this pie in the sky idea that came down from our parents that came through society or our coworkers, but somewhere inside of you, there's an intuitive voice that is telling you what you need to be focused on. And the easiest way to distinguish that is pay attention to the activities that you do that energize you. So if I wasn't getting energy from spending time in the garden or even having an exchange like this, I wouldn't be doing it because that's how critical it is for my life. So when you need to have a reset, Take some time or get used to taking some time and have an honest discussion with yourself. Observe yourself throughout the day. Hey, when I show up in this meeting or even interact with this person, is this feeding me or is it draining me? And by doing that, we can kind of start to reset with that harvest phase again. Now we can maybe have a new picture in mind, but this is going to be a more aligned one. And again, that season might not last for another five years like you think it would, but you need to honor your curiosities and energy while you have it. Mm, I love that. And, you know, when you were saying all of that, what popped in my mind is enjoy the journey, right? Yeah. So really just trust the process and enjoy the journey. And I know people say that all the time. And it's definitely easier said than done, you know, because the process can be really, really hard sometimes. So with that being said, how does gardening teach us to really enjoy the journey when they, when we know hardships are inevitable? That's a great, great question. Because you get to go through this process in a, in a small form. For me, every single week, I can start a new plot every single day. And every time I'm going through this journey, I'm building my tolerance for seeing things not work out the way I expected to. I'm also building my tolerance for having positive expectations. So the garden in itself is a mini universe and growing with microgreens means you can go through this cycle in a week versus taking, you know, six months or a year with other crops. And this is a way that I, uh, by kind of having this view on my personal life in the garden, it's almost like a proxy for me. It's almost like having a, a little test ground to see chaos and creativity all in one place, uh, take what feeds me in the moment and go about my life. Mm, that's good. I like that. Take what's feeding you in the moment and use that to go about your life. How many of us don't do that? <laughs> we don't even slow down long enough to even realize what's feeding me in the moment. Right. right. And, and I work a lot with uh, men of color, especially black men in the travel mm -hmm. space. Um, and that's a problem that we have, you know, so my discovery of self-care, I was telling you that I did my own hair today, but like just yep. being in tune with myself to be like, oh, okay, I got these, you know, this is how my curl pattern feels back here. Like men, especially it's, it's tough for us to regain that intuitive sense that I feel like women just, are naturally encouraged to have more of. So i that's one of my struggles is how can I take better care of myself to make it through, um, you know, and thrive through 2021. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have guys on the podcast because then podcast is living her truth. So automatically people think that 
it's only gonna be conversations with women and it started off like that where it was just only women but I'm like no let me bring some guys on here too because number one we can learn from them right um we can still learn from guys how to live in our truth we have male teachers male trainers male pastors like we learn from men all the time but also to to invite guys to the conversation so they can you know learn these same principles because most guys they just don't know you know uh, a sister and brother can be raised in the same household and be raised completely different you know and so <laughs> It's completely different. And um, sometimes it's just, it's, it's a detriment to our guys. You know, it's, a, it's just a detriment. So yeah, I'm glad I'm having this, this conversation. And I'm glad that you expressed that you did your own hair today because most guys probably would not have even um, expressed that. <laughs> My husband, um, he's letting his fro grow out just a little bit, just a little bit so he can like curl it up. So him doing his hair every day, he's just like, oh, I don't even know how you, how you do it. Cause he just be using the little sponge to curl his hair. He like, oh, my arm is tired. I'm like, hey, I'm used to it. I've been natural for like 12 years now. So welcome <laughs> to the club, babe. Welcome to the club. <laughs> my you know, my forearms over here cramping from putting in these two strand twists, but you know what? I'm, I'm good for it. Listen, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's gonna be pop <laughs> exactly that's what you want to do to make yourself feel good then go for it go for it so you guys all the guys that's listening it's okay for guys to practice self-care that's what i was that's the point i was trying to make that it's okay for guys to practice self-care it's not a female thing self-care is not a female thing everybody needs to needs to practice self-care so yeah maybe i need to bring a guy I want to talk about that I don't know we'll see but um you guys let me know tag me on social media at Lakeisha Wooder and let me know that's something that you guys are interested in to have a conversation with a guy on practicing self-care let me know so Jerry this has been awesome thank have you, you heard you are awesome today yet <laughs> I haven't thank you I'm gonna take that all in <laughs> you are awesome but before I let you go I have to ask because I said it earlier today that I am addicted to Audible. So I always ask my guests mm -hmm. to tell me, you know, what book or Audible book, it can be a book that you actually read, because I know everybody's not on Audible, but tell us what book or Audible book that you have read or listened to that has inspired you in some way. Absolutely. My book, and I do not know the author just yet. It's escaping okay. me, but it's called The Alchemist. Oh. That That is my go-to book. I, I reread it. Uh, maybe about a year ago. And I read it first when I was a kid. I told you I was I was a big reader anyway. So mm -hmm. um, and then I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is my life. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> so that's the book I gift to my sisters. I have two younger sisters that I love dearly. Mm -hmm. um, that's like, yo, you want to find your path, your purpose in life, like listen to this journey. Yeah, it's fictional, but you'd be surprised how easily fiction turns into reality when you have the right mindset. Mm -hmm. I love The Alchemist and you guys it's definitely on Audible and I tried to pull it up real quick and I couldn't but it doesn't matter click the Audible link that's in the show notes and I'll make sure that it's there but yeah The Alchemist that is a really good that's a really good book and that's probably something that you need to read multiple times and at different times in your life so if you already read The, the Alchemist and you like I didn't even like the book we we're talking about. That's okay. If you are in a different season of your life, just put the book down and come back to it because you know the, the information that's in there, you can definitely relate, but I just think you have to be in the right mindset to do so because it can possibly go over your head that first time around. It could possibly go over your head a little bit. So yeah, it can be give it another try. <laughs> huh? It can be a little bit too slick at times. Yeah, it could. It really could. So definitely read it a couple of times if you... Um, if you guys have read it already. Have you read The Four Agreements? If you like The yes. Alchemist, okay, good. Four Agreements, my favorite version of that series though is the the language of the mastery of love. Hmm. I like that one better to explain The Four Agreements than The Four Agreements. Oh, I didn't know that was a, okay, The Mastery of Love. Is it by the same author? author? Yep, same author, same collection as Miguel something or other, something like that. Okay. Like, yeah. Four Agreements is tough, is is a, not tough and like it's a difficult read, but like, yeah, like if you really want to establish those boundaries in your life, 
you're going to come across differently to some people, but it's, I love it. So um, that's definitely been a part of my uh, education. <laughs> okay. I'm definitely going to check out the mastery of love. And, and you know what? I think there's a fifth grade man. Cause I want to say I was mm-hmm. going to audible and I saw, okay. So I wasn't, I don't right. know what it is. I didn't read that book. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't listened to it either, but I'm like, that's interesting. A fifth grade man. Okay. That's interesting. I'm like, Sometimes those are like marketing ploys. You know, Stephen Covey came out with the the ape habit of successful people. He was like, listen, my guy, I know the books are selling well, but like, you want to give me foundation or not? Right, exactly. So when I saw, it's funny that you say that, because when I saw the fifth agreement, I'm like, mm, I'm going to wait on it because I feel like the four that you gave ties everything up in a nice little bow. So, mm-hmm. okay. But I, I ain't going to knock it till I, till I listen to it, guys. I ain't going to knock it till I try it. So, uh, Jerry, last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, I want you to tell me what it means, you know, in three words. When I'm giving you two words and you tell me what your third word is, okay? Gotcha. Those words are self-awareness, mm-hmm. purpose, and... Execution. <laughs> We've said it a whole bunch throughout this show, but it's execution. They say faith without works is dead. And there's a reason why we keep reading about it because people keep needing reminders. It's not good enough to have great ideas in your head. It's not good enough to be super self-aware and lovey-dovey, but you ain't getting stuff done in the real world. Engage with the world. You will get all the lessons you need, all the feedback you need. Mm, Execution. Let me see. I don't think anybody has said execution yet. Nope. I don't think nobody has said execution yet. And I, and I love that, you guys. I love that, you know, over the, the next nine weeks at this point, um, we we're going to be talking about um, different elements of strategizing your vision, which having a strategy to put behind your vision is to help you execute. It's all about execution. That's all we've been talking about thus far this year. And it's what we're going to be talking about throughout quarter one of this year, execution. So that is perfect, Jerry. That was perfect. That's perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. This was a really great conversation. I'm about to listen to this several times myself. Because <laughs> I've been taking notes, but I'm pretty sure I've missed some jams or two. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me, hosting you on your platform. I love connecting with other podcasters, but also purpose-driven people. And like the energy is palpable. I already know who I'm talking to. This is fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. Did I tell you this episode was going to be good or did I tell you that this episode was going to be like epic? (laughs) I really hope that you picked up all of the gems that were dropped on this conversation. Every moment when I said to you, please sit on that and meditate, like, please sit on that and meditate. Like, please do just that because everything Jerry said today is relatable and you probably experienced it last year or Maybe you're going through one of the four garden phases right now. And until this episode, you weren't able to find the words to describe how you were feeling. Or maybe you were too shameful to say the words out loud. All right. Despite which category you fall in, you now have actionable steps you can take to move past stuck. Now you have questions to meditate on to journal about, and then answer so you can properly build your strategy for 21. But more importantly, you now have permission to give yourself grace to actually trust the process and get good at having a growth mindset. Man, that was so powerful when he said that, that we need to get good at having a growth mindset. Man, I love that. Remember how we talked about enjoying the journey life lays out for you in order to actually trust the process? Well, what if life throws you a curveball that's life-changing? Like, I know the pandemic was life-changing, I know, but the pandemic, that was soon in, right? But what if life threw you a, a curveball, something that you'll never get rid of, or something that will constantly hang around and be a constant reminder of your wrong decision or a constant reminder of your lack of judgment or a a constant reminder of a desperate decision that you made that didn't have a positive outcome. Well, we're going to talk about that scenario next week. So definitely come back to join the conversation because you don't want to miss that.
family. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast every single week. If you need support while putting in the work to get good at growth, then head on over to strategizeyourvision.com for more information. Also note that all Audible recommendations given on any episode are linked in the show notes below and you can try Audible for free. Please remember to leave a five-star rating and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. And also don't forget to click the join community link that's in the show notes so we can stay connected. Family, as you know, I said a lot to go to touch one million hearts within the first two years of the podcast. And I can only do it with your help. So please remember to download each episode, share this conversation with at least four people you know, and repost on your favorite social media platform. Well, family, I appreciate you. And my heart is filled with so much gratitude. And until next time, always remember that you are enough and your truth is beautiful.